All right, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Please subscribe to the channel. Please. Hey guys, YouTube's got an algorithm and it really, really help us out a lot if you could like, comment, and subscribe. This is how we can get more information out to more people and uh, share the message of Toronto real estate. In Thanks. In that order, like, comment, subscribe, and hit the damn bell. Welcome. Yes. No, no footage previous to this. I'm gonna so we had a little bit of a delay this morning, and Daryl and I, we had the intern, like the interns were working on it. We had all these sound <laughs> and audio guys. And I came up with the genius idea of just restarting the computers. Okay. And look at that. You're talking about the interns, right? You're no, no, big time. There's a lot of stuff the happening place. behind them. <laughs> Everybody's the getting fired here. after this one. <laughs> yeah, somebody. That's he's it. not we getting paid, and now he's getting paid less. Interns around here. <laughs> Yeah, you're gonna have to pay us. Start paying me next week, (laughs) Mister. Well, good morning. Welcome to. We're gonna introduce our guest just quickly. That we can. That way, we can start with this. Nasma Ali is a very successful real estate agent in the Toronto area. She works a lot in the core, East End, all over. I'm sure she specializes in a lot of different areas. Uh, OneGroupRE.com is her website. She's with Remax. Hallmark. I've had the pleasure of uh, meeting with her, and she's helped me out before in the past. She's a great agent, and we're happy to talk to her today. Hi, thank you for having me. Hello, hello. We're very excited. Oh, look at this. Right on the website. Ooh, there you go. I gotta have a nice website. It is. Yes, it's a Showing beautiful it website. Off. So it is the Toronto Real Estate Show. We try to stay on topic. Sometimes that works out better than others. But, uh, you know, we just want to know what's going on. We've been talking to a lot of people. We talked to the development side and we've been talking to commercial real estate, uh, you know, residential real estate people. When, whenever I talk, no one believes me, right? Yeah. Daryl always has some sort of witty reply to all my stories. So we want to hear from you. What's going on right now in the real estate market? That's like a loaded question. There's we're so hoping much you there. have the Can answer. Be more we, have, we want the answers. We want the answers yeah, exactly. and we're expecting them from you now. I mean, nobody else has been able to give us the answer so far. Yeah, right. Um, I mean, like, it's pretty much I'm pretty sure everyone has said the same thing on on whoever whoever came before me. Um, So suburbs, a huge boom. And uh, so so all the Toronto big money of urban areas has now went on to suburbs. And so all that money now is pumped into suburbs. So they're seeing appreciations that they've never seen before. Yeah. and now suburb agents know how to hold uh, multiple offers, which they, be, they didn't really before. <laughs> Again, <laughs> practice. Really um, but, um, and the, I mean, downtown, it's such a, it's such a weird thing. Like last year, condos were just terrible and they went down and we're telling everyone now's your time for condos. And, you know, people will come in and ask me to sell their condo. And I, I literally would not know how long it would take. I would mm. not know because nothing has sold at, during Corona, for example. And so I'd be like, I have, I, it could take two weeks if we're lucky, or it could take three months. Most times it took either three months or never, like they just never ended up selling. And what was happening is that houses were moving really fast in prices. And so, but their condo price wasn't. So a lot of our clients who wanted to upsize, they actually couldn't because mm. they couldn't buy anything because their condo wasn't selling. And yep. the prices of houses were going so high that all of a sudden now they actually couldn't afford anymore to sell because their price wasn't as high. It wasn't moving at the same appreciation. So right. anyway, now what's happening? I mean, if you talk to me January, February, I'd say, you know, just insane, like 60 plus offers in the suburbs. And in the urban areas, there were still multiples, I would say more like 20 ish, 10 to 20. That's all. Just 20, Daryl. Yeah, just 20. Just 20. But no it wasn't... Deal. There's that huge <laughs> drop off we were talking about last week. Well, I want to oh, hear I want to hear directly that's from it. her. Because, that's what I'm saying. It's like, it. do I talk from last year? Do I talk from that? So it's just no, changing. Now, like, now, it's, now, one those, yeah. it's one of those things where it's, when someone tells me how much is this worth? It's actually, we used to be able to say right off the bat, this is the range. Now I say it's more than this, but let me check. Cause there's always something that sells at any given moment. That's just going to change everything. 
Um, so in the past few weeks, actually, I've been seeing a little bit of a change. I know all the agents are going to come at me and say, no, I'm still seeing, you know, multiple offers. We're we'll still seeing, we're still competing. I get it, but we're actually not seeing the same levels as we were three weeks ago. Like there are some, some houses are not getting 10 to 20 offers in urban areas. And actually even in suburbs, uh, I have some agents on my team that are offering on places that either have no offers mm -hmm. or they end up with one or two. And this is the problem that happens in this specific shift is that these sellers already are thinking they're going to be filthy rich and they're going to make more than their neighbor even. And they end up with less on offer night and they're, they're not happy. So they already have this skewed sense of what their place is worth. And so now they relist and they're making it harder for buyers to just finally get a break. Um, but yeah, that's kind of, I just see kind of this little subtle shift and more and more places hitting the market, more and more people realizing they could get rich and they're like, let's just sell and get out of here. Um, and uh, I don't know. And, and more and more companies actually are, are just kind of like, last year, we wasn't sure if we we're going to go back to offices, but everyone I speak to who wants to move out is just saying their company has said either you're never come you don't need to ever come back or um maybe you'll come back one week uh, one day per week and so everybody's just leaving right so mm -hmm. yeah so it's kind so, of, so a, it. couple of a few weeks ago then nasma a few weeks ago you saw a change yeah i mean Can you give us any examples where you're kind of like you know, you knew maybe like a certain neighborhood was getting a lot of activity. And then all of a sudden you listed a house and there's like four houses on the street for sale. And it was like, you know, something like that. Like, yeah, actually, that's a good point. Yeah. So that's one T of the things which is, yeah, go on. TK was also saying for the last couple of weeks that he's been feeling this, the same thing that you're talking about. So I don't think um, the agents are going to jump on you quite the way you think. I think they're probably well, on Twitter. They the are. Thing. They all want to prove me wrong. Well, <laughs> Twitter's none of the good, none of the good agents. Of brainiacs over there. <laughs> But uh, yeah, no, I mean, uh, uh, th that's one of the things is that before we didn't even have anything like in January, when I say before, I mean, January, February, when I would list something, there was nothing in the streets, barely anything in the neighborhood. Now there's a lot more competition. And again, this is what people don't understand. That doesn't mean houses are not going to sell. It doesn't mean there's going to be a crash. What it means is there's always just this like, you know, it's like a beauty pageant. There's always this one winner that's going to get everybody's attention. They're still going to get 20, 30 offers, right? And then the other ones just fall on the wayside and they're kind of rejected. They don't get as much attention. Uh, but what are the other ones? The ones that don't have nice photos. Maybe there's a tenant inside, doesn't look nice. Uh, maybe they're on a busy street. They're facing a school, whatever it is. Like those ones are going to be the rejects. They're going to feel the effect. Whereas January, February, they didn't feel any effect. Didn't matter. You could be the ugliest duck in that beauty pageant, and you were you still you were got getting a first a place ribbon. ribbon. You're going home yeah. happy. You're gonna win one of the categories. Condos oh, are God. different, though. Condos. Oh my God. Why? What's What's different? going on now? Oh my. I saw. I saw. On? I've only been in North York and downtown. I haven't been all over condos, but North York and downtown, like Young Street, up and down, it's just nuts. Yeah, yeah. condos. Oh my God, it's day and night. Honestly. It's uh, it's funny because like I last year was brutal, of course, and I was wishing we could go back to pre pre COVID because people couldn't do anything. It was out of anybody's control. They couldn't move if they wanted to. Like families with children living in a crammed condo, they just couldn't sell and like you know what I mean. They just couldn't do anything. Whereas before, we really took this for granted. We had such a booming market and economy. It was just so easy. Like as soon as you decide you want to move, you just move, right? Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, last year we could barely, I mean, condos were barely selling. Nobody wanted to touch them. And now condos are just like, we're getting multiple, like 10 offers. We listed a loft in front of Trinity. In a week, we got about 100 showings. The, the sellers, like they moved out because it was just too, too much. And we received like nine offers. It sold, it broke the record of pre-COVID. That's when you know that, you mm, know. That's, a, that's um, the numbers we want to hear. Yeah, right. That's the most uh, important thing here, right? Is like, is it just yeah. good compared to last year or is it good like overall? Not everything is like pre, like higher than pre COVID, but it's getting close to that. And um, not everybody hires you as their agent. 
Yeah, right. <laughs> no, I don't. Like, honestly, it's not an <laughs> agent thing. To, it's just such bullshit. It's the market. Like a lot of it is market. I think you can tell Thank a good. Thank you for saying that. You know what? You could tell a good agent <laughs> in a slow market. That's when you can see if the so, agent is good. So, so are there agents though who? Are there agents out there who are not able to perform the same type of um, success stories that other top agents can? Come on, there's got. Um, there's okay. people who graduate at the bottom of the class in every field, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so, no. Well, listen, and even in multiple, like you, you and I both know, even multiple offers. Yes, like obviously, a, a top top agent can perform better. There's a lot of things that you can negotiate harder on. You know, stats more, sales more, whatever. But still, let's just in perspective. You know, the market's hot. Any idiot agent can sell something at a pretty decent price. Let's say they just sell. I agree. But I that's agree. why I think that in a slow market is when you really know if you can maintain the relationship with your client and still have a good, respectful relationship after three months of going through how brutal it is to try to sell a condo, then I think you're a good agent mm, because good, you need to really value. communicate with your client and you need to hustle and you need to try and you need to work hard if this market's slow and you just put up the, you know, MLS and you disappear and you're, you don't want to talk to your client because you're just like, you don't know what to tell them. That's a bad agent. Like you have nothing to say to your client. Um, how many times have you gone into an appointment where someone was listed and they told you my agent listed the property. I never saw them again until they came for a price change oh, yeah. or a relist at oh, the yeah. end of expiry. And oh, I was yeah. like, what the hell are you talking about? Oh right? yeah. You know, I talk about those from the moment I see them. If I feel like they have this uh, set price, I actually tell them right off the bat, we'll list it at that. I'm on, you know, I'm on the same page. Let's get the most amount of money, but we need to reevaluate a week or two later. If it's not working, if you don't, we don't have enough showings, we need to adjust the price. So, so it's not a surprise. I don't want anyone to be dis surprised or feel duped or whatever. Anyway, this isn't about like me, but, uh, but just, just in wanna, general. I want to hear that too. Yeah, because yeah. it's all part of the business, and this is the Toronto Real Estate yeah. Show, and there's lots of good stuff out there, and people are doing different things. Yeah. So I think that if someone's being successful in real estate, it's not just because they're good at talking to people and people like them. I think you have to be uh -huh. good at your job as well yeah. so that people are going to want to use you, recommend you, all that kind of stuff, right? That's, well, that's and, it. I think recommend The reality in, in an up market, even the seller doesn't really give a shit who they list with, right? It's when things get a little tighter or they've had that bad experience with somebody once oh, yeah. that they start to think about it. But most people are more than willing to use cousin Mary's sister-in-law uh, because she's an agent and we know her, right? And then they may have a good, they, the, it may sell because it, look, like you're saying, most agents, they can list it on the MLS and sell it for a decent buck. And, and, and you know who those people are though? Hmm. You know who those people are who say, oh, let me use my cousin or whatever. They're the people who are too embarrassed to squeeze you on the com commission because you're a stranger and you're like a top agent, but they are okay not going to be shy from squeezing their cousin uh, and uh, being like, Hey, do it for 1%. I'm giving you a chance here. Sure. Right. So I know what goes on behind closed doors. That's what's happening. It's not because like they don't care who lists. They actually do care. What baffles me is that this is the biggest asset you own and you want to put it in the hands of someone who may not have that kind of experience yeah. if things go wrong and things go wrong a lot of times. A lot. And Almost every time. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Don't. Oh, my God. Anyway, uh, stories I have. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Let's Grace. hear one. Yeah. What is that? Let's hear one. Let's hear no. one. What is the story? biggest What's fire you had to put out this right year? Now, it's just, What's no. happening right now? Oh, my Lord. No. No? <laughs> when it's. When I I'm done with it, I'll I'll talk about it. But yeah, it's just it involves a tenant. Tenants are fun. And, uh, oh my god. Anyway, but uh, yeah, but for condos now, I mean, like I'll give you another example of one that's not as popular as a loft. Last year, we were like, uh, you know, we'd be lucky if we get like 720. And even then, I was like, I'm not even sure how long it's gonna take. And it's a gamble because he has a tenant. And I said, you know what? You're better off getting the tenant out. Let's just spruce it up, stage whatever. And um, and he did cash for keys. He got the, you know, tenant was okay to leave and, and we listed, and then we finally listed this year and uh, we listed at 750, which is pretty top end, like 750. And our condo fees actually were really high compared to other units. It was the one, the Esplanade, uh, pretty high, but the reason they were high, like another, it was an older building, but also another reason is because of COVID 
So you know how some buildings have utilities included, the older ones, mm -hmm. and the newer ones don't have utilities included, maybe water, right? Sometimes nothing. Sometimes, Sometimes it's like nothing. bare yeah. bones. Yeah. So the ones that do have utility, be careful because um, because of COVID, what happened is everybody's home. Mm. And so because everybody's home, these utilities went like through the roof. And so they had to compensate usually so in his building the increase has been two to four percent every year very normal inflation whatever but this year they increased it 12 percent because wow. of this what's and the square so, footage roughly on the on the condo it was like uh i think 700 650 i can't even remember and, what, uh, and what's was, the maintenance fee uh it was uh 730 after the increase it was 730 so over a dollar per square foot yeah yeah on yeah. yeah 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 i think it was a dollar 20 i think it was 650 square feet wow. sorry I think oh. it's that's feet. like one of the highest around well yeah but that's that's why right and yeah. it but that's when that's actually okay this is when we're talking about a good agent who can sell something like this because you know even if it is a hard market you need to explain this and where you know, you kind of make it, you don't promise anything, but there is a possibility that might go down. And, and the other thing is why gamble with a building that hasn't even announced their increases? What if they increase at 20? At least, you know what you're dealing with here. But okay. anyway, so um, yeah, COVID fucked up everything. It's just, there's Pretty nothing much. left. Sum it up. <laughs> right? But uh, in terms of rents, like I know you guys had this article about rents. Yeah. Yeah, you rents rents? Are you yeah of course. Yeah, Rental's yeah. huge. Yeah. Investors, uh, multifamily apartments, condos, purpose-built rentals. This is all what we talk about. So yeah. rents are a big we deal. We do a lot of, yeah, we do a lot of like, we have a lot of investors and like we help them lease out their condo or house or whatever. And uh, which is TK, I'm sure you know, like it's a pain. It's of not course. fun. Yeah. <laughs> it's like definitely not something. Like yeah. sometimes they, they kind of make it like they're doing as a fair, like, oh, I'm going to give you this listing, but it's like, oh, you have no idea. It's actually a burden, but it's, it's uh, an, an added service to the whole big picture with the client. It's it. not, it's not totally. individually based. It's, yeah. oh my God, totally. Like, again, like lease listings are, it's a burden if you're trying to do it well, you want to say something, Daryl? No, no, no. I, I, I can't even imagine why anyone would take a rental listing. Like, what do you get? 2,500 oh. bucks? I don't well, even care what you get. The stress is not even worth it. And all these idiots yeah. coming and going. No one can afford Honestly, the I wish place. I didn't have, oh, I wish I didn't have it's, to it's take a service. Them. You know what? The clients want you to, you know, whether you sell them the con the unit or they're thinking about selling it in the future. So, but what if you think that there, there's the no chance that you'll ever get any other business from this landlord ever again? Would you take the, the lease? No, I'll still help. Like this is, I just, I've never turned down someone who's asked for help. No. Because I, I actually it. feel as corny as this sounds, I actually feel like they need the help. And there's, I truly believe there's no better person, no offense, TK, but there's no better person to help okay. them. I don't, I I'm agree. not thinking about you, but I'm just thinking yeah. in general, there's no better person to help them. And I feel like they really need like someone tough on the other side to help them through this. And I see it like it's a really big storm and we're on a boat. And I'm like the one that's trying to navigate and help right. them. That's truly how I see it, trying to get to the finish line. Even if we don't get to the finish line, I, I, I set their expectations. Like I tell them, listen, we might not, get, we might not get, it might take a long time, but there's mm -hmm. solutions. There's ways around that. But, um, but yeah, rentals are really tough and, uh, but it's two different things though. Houses are tough. Uh, sorry. Houses are good. House rentals never rentals. been better. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So full house, uh, townhouse, something like that. Like, oh, yeah. easy, easy. Okay. I mean, not easy. You still have to vet the tenants and do all that stuff, but it's easier than condos. The demand is there, right? Yep. Uh, people actually want houses even more now. Uh, mm -hmm. They want a full house. They don't want like a basement apartment house or honestly, anything they can get that's a house, they will want it more because there's green space. They can get out. There's no elevator. There's no density, you know? Can you, can you give us an example of um, like a tenant that uh, was in a condo that one of your clients had from, a, you know, last year's rent, the year before, whatever it is. And now they've been forced to take a lower number in this uh, oh, environment yeah. and what that number is, like what the disparity is. Mm. Oh my God. It's, it hurts to talk about actually. This is downtown so, uh, we're talking about? This is downtown. The market, yeah. Oh yeah. Downtown. So actually I had a, a lot of calls from our clients who, um, who had a tenant who basically, I have my own tenant who told me the same thing. Um, 
So a lot of tenants basically called their uh, landlord and the landlord calls me saying, you know, they want to, you know, either they lost their job, they're not paying me rent, what do I do, right? That's the worst of them. Uh, the second worst is we found a bigger place for cheaper, we're out. That's the second worst. If they even uh, gave then, you that call, then just disappear, yeah. right? <laughs> hey, uh, yeah, hey where'd they go? <laughs> and then the third is well no they want their last month rent right, right. Uh, and then the third is uh the third is uh hey there's a unit in the building that is listed at 1700 and i'm paying 2200 and uh, i want a reduction when mm -hmm. they call me i literally tell them hey like be thankful that they're giving you a chance for you not to go through vacancy because if mm -hmm. they leave you have no idea how long it's going to take because you're competing now with six other units. It's a race to the bottom mm, because yep. even this, you know, what's funny. Oh my God. Let me tell you this one. This, this client I had at uh, one of the buildings in King West, they first came to me and the tenant wanted, I think he, he I think he went from like 2250 or 2300 to like eight, 1900, 1900. Okay. Or 18. I can't remember. Okay. They were like, oh no, like they don't want to face reality. They were like, no, we're not doing this, da, da, da. But it's like, it doesn't matter how stern you are. They have options. If he was bluffing, yeah, he's, but he's not bluffing. I could see it. It's on MLS. Like he can literally move a few floors up and get a cheaper place. So no moving van. Get, and get the, the move paid for and a couple of free months of rent and probably a, frat, a flat screen TV right now. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. The incentives. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so anyway, so uh, by the time they came to kind of the realization that, okay, we're going to have to do this, it was like two weeks later, now the rent went down to 1700 So it's mm -hmm. like, why? Because now they had to like reduce it even lower. But uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely tough. My, my tenant actually asked me to reduce, but he's in a main floor of a house. And I actually told him, I'm like... The, the, those rents didn't because he's like rents went down we've been reading i said actually those rents didn't go down if anything they're even more desirable yeah but yeah. i love this tenant they're so good and they actually did have a problem like they have like they had a they took a hit on their income and i was okay with reduce i mean you know they're they're great they're great tenants if they weren't great tenants i'd be like okay you can leave yeah if they're paying but and they asked for the discount and they literally could go two floors down the landlord would be foolish to take a gamble on, Cause you're going to get the same rent anyways. Oh, yeah. And then you could end up with a tenant who doesn't want to pay or mess up the place. Right? So if you got a good tenant and they're asking for a discount as a landlord, what I would do, you let me know what you think. Okay. I would offer them, um, you know, if they want a new lease agreement, I'd do a new lease agreement. It would be at the old rate and I would offer them the rent discount for the year. So that way they're paying the new rate. And I say, look, at the end of this year, we'll reconfigure and figure okay. out which one the best road is. Do you want to go back to the old rate or do you want to leave yeah. or do we sure. negotiate a new rental discount and see what you want to do? Yeah. That's actually what some of our landlords are doing now when they're listing a place. Uh, let's say they accept 2,600. They're not going to, and then someone comes in and says they want 24. They're not signing a lease at 24. Mm -hmm. They're signing 26 and they're doing a few. And by the way, you have to have the last six months at the price of the so if the last six months are paying 24 you can't really renew at 26 so that's kind of the rule is like the last six months so what he does is the first six months he gives them a discount so that the yeah. average is like 24 the and then the last hundred bucks is paid, paid is discounted in the first six months and some and that of them equates get it. to yeah some of them get it and they're like wait a minute what does that mean for next year and then some of them i mean if they have an agent i'm not gonna explain that like the agent should should know this but uh you just, you just uh, say you don't know you we say, talked well, about this look at the market like, conditions in like march or april uh, uh, about just different ways of signing leases didn't we and this is kind we, of we a, talked about that yeah different ways to market which is what um nasma is talking yeah. about which is um actually uh, i'll tell you one more thing i'll yeah. tell you a little change that you probably the news hasn't even like doesn't even really know about is just on a micro level because i have a pretty big team and like some of these agents do a lot of leases and i actually asked them what's going on because they know like day to day everything so i what they're telling me which i'm pretty sure you don't know about maybe is that now there's multiple offers on leases 
Oh my goodness. What yeah. is yeah. going First, on? Folks, holy it's smokes. What? Oh yeah. Where? But, like, where? What, what where? is this? But where? okay, first Why? of all, houses How? definitely houses pricing it low. Like, is this what they're doing? Uh, okay, so definitely multiple offers on houses, house leases, whatever, but also condos. And for example, let's say there's like five condos in the building listed at 25, and then there's one guy at two twenty one hundred. Mm-hmm. That guy's getting all the offers. At I what? Twenty five. So they're using the, the strategies from the, the the resale market. Oh yeah, pretty much. Leasing or, market. Or if that one, that there's this one that's like much nicer than the other one, stage. But you know why it's stage? No one stages for leases. It, it, I, it, a lot of them are like, you know, when you list for sale and lease just to see what you get. Yeah. Well, so they probably so have staged it for the it. sale, but mm-hmm. by consequence, it's like, you know, it's also for lease. But uh, but those also are getting all of the offers. Let's say, like I have, <laughs> my agents are telling me they're getting notifications that for houses that they've leased before they even have the time to see them. And uh, they have multiple offers. And a lot of times now, and which we're doing as well, if we get multiple offers, we actually check their rental application. We kind of vet them just quickly on the surface first before they give us their offer because um, we're not just gonna take the highest offer. We want the offer with the best, you know, A plus tenants, especially with COVID. You want kind of an employment that's kind of COVID proof in a way. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, you want someone solid. A lot of our, our, our landlords like really want someone solid, uh, ideally with two incomes, because yeah. what if one is lost, what are they going to do? So, but hold on uh, a sec. Where are these people renting and who are they? Are they local? Oh, yeah. Are they new? Are they, yeah. where so are when, they coming they, from? But that's the thing I asked these, like my agents is like, okay, why is downtown getting multiples? Like, why are people going to downtown? downtown. Who are these people who are actually moving? Actually, so what they said is, it's people who already live downtown, and they're just upsizing for less so money. There's a lot, so there's a lot of people now, a lot of current downtown tenants that are realizing they can get like a two bedroom for their one bedroom. So they're leaving their one bedroom, and a lot of people who, you know, obviously they need more space now. By the way, two bedrooms are booming. Booming. Way more than studios, you know. It used to be that you want to get a studio because that's the cheapest thing you need to get into downtown. Now everybody wants a two bedroom because a you can get like an office space, or if you have two people, they actually have their own space at home when they're working. Um, and then uh, b they can get kind of they're paying the same price as a one bedroom, but now they get a two bedroom. Yeah. So those are the people, or the people who are still going to work downtown, right? Those are the people that are like, but but otherwise people are flocking cab to drivers houses. just just the cab drivers so it's so local people that currently live downtown yep. that are leasing downtown yep exactly so, so we're not having more people leasing into the no. downtown we're having no. a shift no. of locations for current downtowners that's kind of no. interesting that that actually yeah. makes it worse i think it makes it worse for the studios and the one bedrooms, right? I kind of worry about that. You know what? Oh my God, the prices went so low. Um, especially, you know, pre-con is just such a, oh my God, those pre-cons are killing people. What do you uh, mean? What do you mean? Talk, go, t- uh, let's talk about that. What does that like mean? Ordinance, you- this place in Liberty. Oh Lord. Like this, it's just all vacant. It's all investors. No one has bought anything in that building to live in. It's all investors. This is where? So the- Liberty Village? Yeah. I get so it. 50 so now, because everyone's leasing, it, the market's flooded with rentals. Oh my God. It's a race to the bottom. Yeah. Who can go the lowest? Now for a studio, I mean, you know, mind you, like the studios are teeny tiny. They're like 300 square feet, the ones that are built there. Whereas there are some in Liberty that are actually decent 400 square feet, like quite large. Uh, but um, But those ones are just, you know... Okay, let me just put in perspective. Right before COVID, I leased out a studio at 60 Colburn. We listed at, I think it was 2000. And in day one, we had three offers and we ended up at 2100, okay, for a studio. Okay? Where was this? Where? That was at 60 Colburn. Okay, yeah. Kind of like, you know, young and church, like whatever. Yeah. Somewhere that's harvest or, yeah. And, um, and uh, that tenant actually, so that rent went down to like fifteen hundred wow. and like four. So wow. the studios now basically average studios used to be two thousand. Now they went back. Now they went down to like maybe 
You can find some for 1400 1400 Holy ordinance, shit. Ordinance. There's one. I think there's one at 1250 at Ordinance. That's how bad it is. Wow. It's like, it's cheaper than a basement apartment. That's like... And by the way, this is another thing I was going to say. How much inventory? Back in the, what was that? How much inventory is there for lease downtown? I have to look. I have to look. Oh, uh, tons. Like, there. I have to look at how many... You know what? I should look. At, in the middle of COVID, there were over 5,000 for lease in downtown, like core, like C1, C8, C2, I think too. Uh, and there were over 3000 for sale. It was bad. It was bad. It was wow. bad. I, ha I have a new, I have a new theory here. Okay, guys, this is, this is fresh off the press. Yeah. Developers, when they sell are only allowed to sell to so many investors and that oh, will be a part of their development application. Daryl, what do you think? That is definitely something. Listen, I think all day, all night about what the hell is going to stop this market and kill this market. Is that that is probably one of the things that will absolutely I'm glad, I'm glad I came up with it. The Toronto real estate market. Well, well listen, the it. reality this, this building... is that even though everybody says it's not that many investors, there's not that many investors, for the most part, they're all investors. Yeah. Okay. It's yeah. it's a very sure. small portion of people that are actually planning on living in these things. Even if they're locals, they're mainly investors. So especially so pre construction. All all yeah, pre construction. They have to live somewhere for a few years, so that it's not their principal residence, right? They're living somewhere. Listen, th yeah. th they they don't incentivize anyone to build rentals, and the city is like sixty percent rentals. So where are all the people going? They're going into condos that have taken on the role of purpose-built rental buildings by having multiple investors owning multiple units in all these buildings. That's been the way of Toronto for a long time, right? Yeah. And, and you, you, they incentivize them to do that by only allowing them to start construction once they've sold most of the building, right? So, so you have to sell to investors because most people can't wait fucking five years to live somewhere. Right. It's just it doesn't work that way. But an investor can because he's buying for maybe, you know, he's buying for two years from now's price, which they'll get possession of in five or seven years. Right. And then they'll have some kind of an income down in the future or some kind of a profit. I, there's not too many people that don't look at it that way. Right. So, I mean, what, that about, what about guaranteed rent then? All developers that, have to do guaranteed that's rent. That's crazy, too, is lately they've been offering this guaranteed rent. And how the fuck are they going to do that now? Oh, my God. Don't even tell. I me, had some tell clients me. who bought in Barry guaranteed rent. You know what happened to that company that was guaranteeing rent? They went bankrupt. Bye bye. There's no more <laughs> guaranteed rent. Bye bye. Because they're when COVID hit, they went bankrupt. They ran away. They had because it was a student okay. rental, right? Students are gone. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's true. Student now that's student. the other si situation here. So the reason the rental market, we're talking a lot about rental, which is good because this yeah. is actually a really big topic that we need to talk about. 60,000 foreign students are typically in Southern Ontario every single year. And I imagine none of them are here right now, right? Yeah. They're all at home. They're oh, all yeah. oh, yeah. getting their courses. They're all getting their, their degrees and diplomas from the country that they live in. They're either when is that gonna change? Or schools or here virtually. Yeah, they're when international or they're in their parents' house, parents' basement in the suburbs or whatever, getting their degree. Exactly. Like there, there was a huge like no more students, no more immigration, no more tourism, you know, um, but like Airbnb is now going to be, Airbnb. you know, I mean, Airbnb is still running. Only. You'd be surprised. Actually, I, I, I talked I have this there's this company I, I we work with their short term rental. It's booming. They need more Airbnbs. <laughs> People but in, are but going in Toronto, around you got you to have a license not for though, a now, condo. residents only. It's yeah, for, people are going, yeah. For houses, you know. no? Or it's for condos still? Which one? What? The Airbnb. People want condos or they want houses? Uh, they don't mind. They just want the cheapest thing possible. Really? <laughs> they, 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 they don't mind. I mean, obviously, families would prefer, like, a house, but, uh, but yeah. You know, I mean, you know who's staying in all the Airbnbs right now is people who are selling their houses. I was just going to tell you. For a week. <laughs> I was just going to say the same right? thing. You need a That's place who's going people. to Airbnbs right now, <laughs> yeah. not tourists or people from yeah. outside of Ontario. The people that sold before they bought something, right? And got stuck because they, uh, they can't yeah, get their They're bridging their closing because they're, they're, cl yeah. they're closing. They have to close first in the house that they're living in. Yeah, yeah. exactly. But so. you, know, you know how I see this is that the fact that our 
rentals are still good. Like last year, there were places that I would lease, I mean, list for lease. And I didn't even know if we we're going to find someone, um, if we we're going to ever have an offer. Um, and then, uh, and then now places are leasing out, uh, the fact that there is a change now because you do have some activity, um, and you will get an offer eventually. Um, but that's despite that there's no, none of all of these other factors. Like, that's why I just feel like when, when we're over this, we're just going to go right back to what we were, maybe even more with all of the influx coming in. Mm -hmm. um but i mean right now we've been watching our show I ourselves think, what was that you've been watching our show i think because that's what we talk about that's is... what yeah no i <laughs> i we didn't were in a crisis part, before but... this we're, we're, we're gonna come out of this in another crisis of some sort oh Go, yeah going like the to... fact that we've survived and we're doing very very well uh despite everything going on i think like when we go back it's gonna be even very well is an understatement listen i mean i'm surprised that we haven't even hit any of these articles yet the, so far which is amazing i mean i love this topic of rentals that we're on because it's super important because everybody else in the media everybody else is focusing on stuff like the great canadian real estate fallacy which is basically talking about how prices always go up in canada right toronto real estate market out of control and unsustainable canadian real estate price growth and low inflation almost comical like everything is talking about banks have the tools to deflate a housing bubble. Like everything is Human bubble, is bubble, all. bubble. It's crazy. It's yeah. too much. You have to stop this. We it can't let so. this go. Let's be real. No, but, then, but then all there we've focused on, all we've talked about for 40 minutes though, is how the rental market is crashing and what an interest. And this is why like, you know, people are fucking confused, right? Nobody, if you're, if you're a waiter, okay. And you were a renter, like your life is totally different than a year ago. Uh, they all went back to like the suburbs to live with their parents. Who knows all what of the, the hell's going industry, on? Industry who people who used to be like roommates or whatever, unless they're in a rooming house, which is like more affordable. Uh, if they're like roommates or what, they just went back to uh, you know their families. But house. it's like such a tale of two totally different like you know what cities, I'll say? right? You know what I'll say about that? Okay, this is. We used to, when I, when I used to work with investors who wanted to buy, let's say a condo downtown in the past few years, I always had to kind of explain that, listen, you're not going to cash flow, right? We'll be lucky if we can find something two, 300 negative, right? And, and let's say we find something. now it's, yeah, now it's, it's, it's way worse. Why? Because prices have, are like, when, when, when the rents were at this level, we were in 2017, let's say. But the prices are not 2017. We're way beyond 2017 prices. Yeah. Um, even if it's at last year's prices, I mean, it's still, there's still this huge gap where it doesn't even make sense even for investors anymore. And I'll say another thing about pre-construction. Um, ah, pre-construction, like, I, I like, listen, I, uh, what I've seen so far, just well, from we'll keep this conversation ground. between us. Okay. Yes. Just between tell, us. Just tell us the truth. Yeah, I'll tell you the truth. I mean, listen, like I, I'm, I um, was a believer and, you know, I also, I have, like I bought two pre-cons in 2017. The problem that I'm seeing right now is, and, and by the way, you know, do you remember this time when in 2017, when the condos boomed, everyone who had pre-construction at the time made a shit ton of money. They made 200, 250. Everybody was trying to assign. I don't know if you remember this. And they were, everyone was trying to sign and they were successful and they were making 200 K with no closing costs, nothing. Right. The Before problem this is Ray was looking at paper flippers too. Yeah. I right, mean, that was like, when they changed that. Yeah. yeah. It didn't stop anything. So yeah. Oh, totally. So, so anyway, the difference now is I feel like almost builders caught on and they're like, well, wait a minute. Why, why are these people pro we should be profiting. And so since 2017, if you bought 2017 plus, I feel like prices, you're lucky if the market catches up to the price that you paid three, four years ago. And I remember in 2017, when all this assignments, the stuff was happening, everybody wanted a pre-con. It was like a frenzy. And they want, people would come to me and explicitly say, I want it because I want to assign. Mm -hmm. And I always tell them, listen, 
Like, I don't want you to depend on this assignment. We have no idea what's going to happen. We can't guarantee that you'll make a profit like that. That's fine. If there is a profit, we'll assign, but you have to be ready to hold on to it when it closes if there is no profit. Are you okay with that, right? So a lot of people I almost discouraged from getting it if their sole goal was to assign. Some people came to me, I think, like I would say two in the past few months who bought with, you know, whatever, another agent. And maybe that agent didn't explain this to them, but they wanted to assign it. And we were lucky to even, I mean, the price that they paid is not, is not even justifiable now. And they bought it in 2018 and 2017. And the price is not even caught up. This is now. refreshing. This is very refreshing to hear right now. And the other Cause... thing is my condo to that, that I bought in 2000, the two that I bought 2017, I probably paid 60 K in closing for each 60 K. Yes. I got 20 K back or whatever for HSD. Okay. So let's just say 40, 45, whatever. Okay. 40, 45. And you know, the occupancy check and then, you know, like my upgrades and things like, I mean, you know, like blinds, whatever sort of things. Um, my price, I, I probably break even. It probably break, break even uh, yeah. if I sold after it closed. I mean, it's one of those things where you really like people just want to get rich really quickly, but there's, you know, we're not, yeah. If you bought pre-con in 2012, 14, 15, yes. Yeah. You made out, 15, you made 16. out like a bandit. Yeah. Yeah. Great. And, and Daryl doesn't sense. necessarily, uh, you know, have a, a say really, you know, I know you're on the development side, Daryl, but when you're talking about us representing clients and giving them the best advice, that is the right advice. I mean, to buy con pre-construction as a profiting type of business, the only thing it makes sense is you don't have enough money to buy right now. You want to take advantage of an incremental deposit structure. Yes. You really want to be in that building when it when it's built, and that's you know the area you want to and be no in. No tenants. That's actually one yeah. good thing now is that you don't have to deal with getting a tenant in this market. And I think by next year, like for an assignment, by next yep. year hopefully it gets better. But yeah. Yeah. That, and that, and that's it. Other, other than that, and it's all speculation. And I think Florida was one of the best. Miami was one of the last markets that had this amazing um, realization because they built so much. And when everyone, you know, tried to close and they realized that they, they paid for all these condos that weren't renting and they, their equity wasn't even there. And sometimes they even get a mortgage. Like there's some serious risk in pre-construction. You don't know what the market's going to be like in three to five years from now. You can't predict it. If you can't afford to rent out your place for 1250 bucks and, and Liberty Village afterwards and carry it for five years, it's not an investment that you should go into. That's funny. I remember my building. Um, my building was uh, like I had moved in. It was an occupancy. And uh, when COVID hit, like we had been waiting for months, like when is it going to close? Right. And then COVID hit and all this talk about people losing their jobs. Oh, my God. All of a sudden now the builder was like, we got to close this now ASAP. And they closed it ASAP. They sent they sent a, a letter in the, I think it was like March, just when COVID happened saying you're closing in 30 days. And I was just thinking of all the people that probably lost their jobs just in that moment. Now they have to get an approval, right? Like a solid approval. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's well, But bad. what about people that buy now? Like everybody, everything you look or read anything you look at or read right now is talking about like rates have to go up or policy has to come in to slow this thing down. So like if you're buying a pre-construction condo now, that's not going to be built for what? Four years at the soonest, three years, five years. Like what's your rate going to be? Yeah. Like you're not locking in now. Right. So like what are people's rates going to be for things that they're paying based on like even what right now? How do you do this right now? Oh yeah. It's such a, like, it's too, it's a big unknown. It's yeah. a yeah. big ch challenge. A it's big a risk. gamble. It's a gamble. But this is the only way that the housing market can kind of work the way it's, uh, the, the rules are set up right now. Cause it doesn't make sense for people to build purpose, build rentals. Right. So, mm -hmm. so if you need those investors in order to get the, the kind of wheels moving and the product built, five, 10 years from now for, for that demand, like how else do you do it other than incentivizing the developers to build rental buildings? Yeah. Right. How else, how else does this machine actually work? Yeah. 
It's crazy, though. But, like, they're talking about we need to raise interest rates because this thing is out of control, but we're not we're not raising interest rates. Like We're not actually going to do that. No, because it's like we need We want you to know that it could this. happen. No, we need this frenzy. Otherwise, we'd be in a horribly deep, disgusting, painful recession right now. Right? Yeah. We're using you know, this. Uh, this is on you know, purpose. Do you guys remember when, uh, you know, the when we started deferring mortgages and everybody said, oh, the, the mortgage cliff. Cliff and deferral. Like November, yes, the November, December, everybody who's lost their job is like, you know, there's going to be a ton that's going to sell at that point because people have to live. There isn't that. Um, I wish I had the stats for this, but nothing. What I'm seeing is there's not really that many power there's sales. There's nothing. Or, you know, foreclosure or whatever. Um, you know, I've had friends who lost and clients who did lose their jobs. A lot of them got a job since then, like found a job. Um, and had a good uh, bridge gap. Who's the who's the 9% unemployed then right now? Who are they? Restaurants, uh, hotels. Uh, Airline. Air, like all retail. the retail, like all those people. And that's a significant portion of, of, of the market, right? You know what? I, I watched a YouTube video yesterday or I read an article that was kind of interesting. So, you know, we're all in, in real estate and we see prices running rampant out of control. Right. Uh, 20, 25, 30 percent year over year numbers. Right. From one year to the next. So we all think that there's this craziness. Right. But but when they're measuring inflation. So we think there's inflation all over the place. Right. Because the market is insane. But yeah. what this article talked about, which kind of opened my eyes a little bit, is that like what percentage of the population is actually affected by the real estate market? I mean, it's only the buyers and the sellers, right? It's no what all the rest of the people that are not moving, not thinking about real estate, like are are ninety eight percent of the population is not moving. I I think, I think so? it's a little actually. Well, I did I did some yeah, numbers so this morning. Yeah, there's a there's a hundred thousand sales in Toronto. Yeah. Right. So if you look at that, and remember, those represent sometimes the same family moving twice, right? Mm -hmm. That's Trev numbers. And if you got 6 million people in the population, yeah, right? Well, so even if you double it. 1%, so it's like one and one like, in a bit. It's like 3% really if you just double it for, because that doesn't it, count. Sure. That doesn't count like new home sales. Exclusives. And, yeah, new home. Okay. And a whole per, bunch of call, other let's shit. Let's call it 5% then. Let's let's triple it. Right. So 95% of the population isn't moving. So, right? but that rampant inflation in home prices only affects a tiny, tiny bit of the actual population, right? So there really isn't that much inflation other than in like day-to-day -day stuff. Like we all know, you know, chicken costs way more and salmon costs way more and you know, just to get a delivery Deep. costs an extra 35 bucks in buried fees that we don't really even pay attention to because, you know, we're embarrassed that we pay so much to just have it brought to our house. But like, you know what I mean? Like th there's a lot of inflation in day to day stuff, but the, the real estate market really isn't causing that big of an inflation issue. And so so when when the, the Bank of Canada says like we're not dropping rates like we need this growth. Something has to grow in this country or we're fucked. Yeah. Like oh, yeah. people out. Yeah. We have to believe them. Like and, and with rents down, technically the cost of living, right? And interest rates going lower. Technically the cost of living is down. Right? The rents are you down. You made the choice interest to buy that rates are down. 4,000 square foot house in Richmond Hill, buddy. <laughs> That's why your bills are going higher. No really. Right? But but what's yeah. interesting is so yeah, we thought there was going to be this deferral cliff coming at us, right? But everybody kind of missed the fact that it was the lower wage earners in that, like those few segments that were the only people that were going to be affected by this thing. And they don't have mortgages, right? Yeah. So all these people that took mortgage deferrals were just like, you know what, they're giving it like I may as well take it. I mean, there's doesn't seem to be any harm in taking this deferral right now. Let's take it and see what happens, right? And that's most of it. And people started paying them off. And now it's like 0.043% of mortgages are in arrears or something. Like it doesn't you even know, count. I'll, I'll, I'll say one thing about the, oh, you know, not a lot of people moving. Uh, but I'm sure, TK, you know, you feel this also. Like I, if, if you compare, so in 2020 um, and in and this year, um people wanting to move it has been a lot more. I mean, if you look at number of sales, if you compare to 2019 and any year before that, I've never seen so many people wanting to move 
uh, this year and last year. Even agents who do okay, they saw a boom in their business, right? Um, what I think is with all of these people moving, what does that mean for next year? Do you think these people are going to move again next year? No, a huge portion of these people who, a lot of them even, they weren't even planning on moving, but after COVID happened, they're like, oh, I don't like my space or whatever. I think there is going to be a slow down. I don't want to like jinx it, but because then you think about, okay, well, there, there's going to be immigration, this and that. Okay, that's going to offset it. But at the same time, all of these people who are moving last year and this year, they're staying put next year. So I, I don't, I tell my, my agents, I'm like, just do the deals because I have no idea what's going to happen next year. Do you know what I mean? Like we might not see this kind of activity next year, um, especially from all the people that have already, so many people want to move. So, but as far as, as far as, whatever it is. And so many people leaving the city. So many are leaving the city. But don't we need that to happen? Like, don't we almost need that to happen so that the people that can afford these new prices can move in? That's funny. But isn't yeah. isn't that a natural progression? Like, we talked about it months ago as this thing started happening, about the Manhattanization of Toronto. Do you remember that, TK? Yep. And, and what has to happen is that for it to keep going and prices to keep going up, people that af can afford those prices have to be able to come in, right? Which means mm -hmm. people have to move out. A and so I think that's probably what happened in New York 60, 70, 80 years ago is that all the local New Yorkers started to move to other areas around mm -hmm. like the burbs around New York so that the immigrants with the big money could come in and get rich mm -hmm. quick or whatever they were thinking they were doing. But I mean, this is what's got to be happening here, because no matter what, like downtown Toronto can't possibly be dead, can it? Like the University of Toronto can't possibly not still be one of the best schools on the planet, right? I think. Is that where you went? <laughs> no, no, I didn't go to university. It is. It is ranked. It is ranked pretty high. But and it's, that's it's up there, the big, right? I'm, yeah, I'm just saying, the like attractions. Th these things are only temporarily happening because we don't have 400,000 people coming in right now. Yeah. I, I, I'm j equally as worried as you are about a crash because this is definitely not a sustainable trajectory, right? But like, if we look back well, in history... Well, let's, let's look grassroots though. Let's look, let's look at the, the people here working on the ground. So I've noticed this, and, and Asma, you tell me the same thing. Mm -hmm. I've noticed that in the last month, I've had calls from people who are telling me I don't have enough money to stay where I am anymore. I do have to make a change. I do have to move, sell, refinance because they've been weathering the storm for the last year. And I've had those calls where I wasn't getting any of those calls up until the last month or so. That makes so, sense. You know, there is an, there is a problem out there, right? And I haven't gotten that many people saying yeah. they can't afford I, I've had people saying they want a better life okay. and they've decided to get more space and, and kind of pay less of a mortgage because they're going to sell high, buy low. Uh, okay, yeah. So what about that? People who felt like the pressure was on and they, they want to take advantage of this market um, and have this sort of fantasy that there's yeah. like a cheaper option out there if they move an hour out of the city. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right? It's funny because uh, the people that we have that are looking outside, they're also by the way, like everyone. I have people who are looking in Nova Scotia, Whistler, but you know, Whistler obviously it's already expensive. Nova Scotia, Kingston, um, uh, all these. Uh, where is it? Uh, Niagara. Uh, there was this other uh, place I can't remember. Hamilton. Anyway, Ottawa, Hamilton, all of these. Oh, Prince Edward County, of course, cottages. Forget it. Uh, all of these places now, uh, it sucks, but my clients are also in a situation where like they want to sell, but they're competing in all these areas, which before they weren't because they're, they're facing other Toronto people. <laughs> it's like the exodus from urban cities or just like any urban city. Um, but everybody's going towards there. So people got sick of fighting each other here. So they moved they're an hour there. away and <laughs> had a bidding war out Mary. there. Hey, yeah, hey. when I hear Barry went up 30% year over year, I'm like, something's not right there. 
that's yeah. not something that should. But uh, Barry's be been happening for a happen while. Again. It's when Durham and Milton are, you know, over a million dollars. It's like that's crazy. Barry's you know, been. We've been talking about Barry for years, no? Oh my God, let me tell you about this story. I don't know if you guys, uh, you probably didn't see. I posted on my my Instagram. So uh, there's in Brampton, there's a house that's sold. They closed in like December. Uh, it's sold for eight, I don't know, 850 something, whatever. Uh, they, they resold, but something shady happened because it was double ended. And then someone messaged me telling me they tried to put an offer for higher than what it sold for. And it was worth a hundred K more, but the agent basically like sold it to someone and then resold it two months later. You get what I'm saying, right? Like mm -hmm. they kind of, it's like what, what, what was happening the first seller. Where they're, yeah. yeah, I mean, exactly. And they're just trying to profit and they did profit. They sold the same house, same photos, nothing was, was touched, no paint, nothing. They sold it in February, which was a peak for uh, 267K more. Whoa. And what they got it for like two months ago, two months before. Yeah. So, and by the way, we're seeing a lot of that, like other houses that are just selling, like people who bought last year and they're like, ooh, I can make money here. Yeah. And you they're just- rental in October? And they're selling. selling it, yeah, and they're Get selling it. for like two, three hundred more. Okay, so we're at the we're at the end of the show. Unfortunately, this this is oh, a great no. conversation. This could go on forever. Was this the so, best one? was this the best one though? Best. Well, number one. As far as, as, I, as far as I am concerned, it is, but it's gonna not be up to us at the end of the day. We need people to watch Why? this thing, right? You, you got to post it on your Instagram oh, and your Lord, Twitter. Oh so Lord, I then definitely don't want to post this. We'll actually be no. able to watch it. Shared. There's <laughs> only so many times Daryl and I can watch our own show from different computers. <laughs> this was, that's right. So yeah, I've got I've got how many computers in the world? The interns <laughs> have like 80 computers lined up again yeah, on behind the walls that screen, here. This one. Subscribe, this subscribe, one. subscribe. Uh, subscribe. Activity in your website <laughs> yeah. was like I was like looking at your website. I was looking at the. And I was thinking to myself, I wonder if only the speakers go and like look in your website, watch your video. That's it. That's it's only it's for like, us. There's only yeah, us and three other people that have accessed that website. <laughs> and I think one of them is my mom. Yeah. I but, to my mom too. So so we're at the part of the show where we ask you to predict what's gonna happen in the near term here. What's near? The rest near of the year. Like, just till the end of twenty twenty one. Okay. Fine. Oh, Oh, that's that's right easy. Um, I think that things are going to taper down. I think buyers are getting sick of this. They're taking a break. They, they're over it. Um, and then the weather's going to get better. So they're going to be finally out again. And, you know, they're not going to want to spend that much time doing showings. Because showings was like the only social activity we had, right? We were allowed to go into people's homes, but we're not allowed to go into restaurants and stuff. So, I mean, it was the only thing that you had to actually go out. Um, and then the weather's getting better. And then the other thing is like more and more listings because spring and, you know, historically summer is really slow. So I don't see this happening. I think everybody, I mean, like continuing for the rest of the year, there might be a little bump in September uh, and then it goes down again, you know, November, December. Um, hopefully nothing catastrophic happens where, you know, the rates go up all of a sudden or... I don't think that that's uh, not nothing. Hopefully, like 2017, nothing dramatic, like that. Government intervention, yeah. Classes. Well, that's what the that's what they're kind of all calling for right now. Like the Bank of Canada is saying, if you want to do something, guys, like you're gonna have to do it with policy because we're not budging, right? So yeah, like so, what kind of policy could come into play right now that could actually slow this thing down or stop speculators it? Speculators tax speculators um, tax i i almost think like what if they uh add that capital gains on the primary residence because then so many people i think might sell just to make that big chunk of money retire yep yeah okay. so they announce I, like next year you're going to be taxed on your principal yeah, residence yeah, and everyone yeah. who's going to retire next year is like mm -hmm. i'm selling now yeah mm -hmm. i yeah. almost feel like that but then on the flip but that side, actually boosts the market for a while yeah, like on the, how would it boost though? A lot of people, all kinds investing. of people are going to be selling and people are still yeah, wanting to buy. Oversupply. There's demand. Oversupply. Maybe oversupply. Yeah. Maybe. But, but on the flip side, it's one of those things where, you know, like land transfer. Oh, you know, make land transfer higher than people won't want to budge or whatever they won't want. But then the problem is that the people who are selling also are not going to want to move. 
because that's what, by the way, that's a lot of problems that we're seeing is that people don't want to sell their place and get another one. They'd rather build because they're going to spend 50K on land transfer. Why not use the 50K for renovations or for building? Hmm. That's why we're seeing in Toronto and urban cities, we're seeing almost an extinction of the starter home, the tiny home, because everybody's just building up and expanding. And like, there's not, not as many of these left right at like the smaller price points uh but um but yeah i think that's a problem a lot of people are are like paralyzed for moving because of this land transfer tax because of the realtor fees right let's not forget about realtor fees five percent five percent come on let's be real does anybody pay five percent does anybody really pay that half half oh yeah pay more pay less of course (laughs) <laughs> that was that was a great that was a great uh talk today so we really appreciate it can we just get one last final shameless plug your website company instagram twitter all that stuff put it out there so anybody who's still listening uh not, no one's really listening but anybody who's still listening you can just put that out there for them so you want me to say it yeah yeah oh that's nice uh yeah website is one group re.com and uh, Instagram, I post a lot of stories, uh, a lot about real estate. Uh, and Twitter, same thing, Nasma dot, D-O-T, Ali, A-L-I. So N-A-S-M-A, D-O-T, A-L-I. That's it. Awesome. Cool. Thank you so much. Appreciate My it. pleasure. Really appreciate it. We'd have to First have you on again. Yeah, back? absolutely. Yeah, as you were saying that, I, see how your predictions I, are. I was inviting you as you asked. But I've watched your videos. You invite everybody back. So (laughs) 